When you're setting up your Linux system, one of the first things you're going to do is set up your swap space, but have you considered what it actually does, how big it should be, and whether you actually need it on your system at all? So today I'm going to try to answer some of those questions. As for how big the swap should be, this is really going to be up to, I guess, your opinion. So I can give some general guidelines about how big it should be and what I normally do on my system. But really, for how big it should be is going to be up to you. But I can at least tell you what swap space is and what it's actually being used for. So the first thing I wanted to go over is just the general process of what swap space is being used for. Not its specific use case, but the process by which it actually gets used. So it's used in a process called swapping. Now on the Arch Linux wiki, there's a pretty good overview of what swapping is and basically how it works. So on a Linux system, your physical memory is divided into chunks of memory called a page. So let's say we have one megabyte of memory. I'll talk about why it's one megabyte in just a bit, just gonna make the maths a little bit easier. But we have one megabyte of memory. Now this one megabyte of memory is split up into a bunch of little subsections and each of these subsections is called a page. And as applications need more memory, these pages can be allocated to them. So if you wanna check how big your page size is on your system, all you have to do is run this command right here. So get conf page size. So as you can see on my system, a page is 4096 bytes. So that's bytes and not kilobytes. Now, this means that that one megabyte of memory will be split up into 256 little chunks. So once you run out of all of those little chunks, then you'll be out of pages to allocate. Now these pages can be deallocated from those applications, but sometimes those applications still need that memory and you need extra pages alongside of those. So swapping is the process whereby a page of memory is copied to the pre-configured space on the hard drive called swap space to free up that page of memory. So you can effectively look at adding swap space as a way to add more memory. Now, it's not as simple as that because swap space is considerably slower than what you have with your RAM. Now, obviously, as hard drives have gotten faster, swap space has gotten faster and faster. Mechanical hard drives are much better than tape drives. SSDs are better than that. And then M.2 drives are even better than that. But it's still going to be significantly slower than what is possible with your RAM. But when you have no pages of memory left, Swap space is going to be better than nothing. So that right there might give you a hint about what swap space is actually used for. So the combined sizes of your physical memory and your swap space is the amount of virtual memory that you have on your system. So in programs like HTOP, you might have seen reference to things like virtual memory. Say you have a four gigabyte system and you're running Chromium or Firefox and it's using six gigabytes of virtual memory. So that six gigabytes of virtual memory is going to be a part of your RAM and is going to be a part of your swap space. So this is just to make sure that your system is still at least somewhat responsive even once you run out of all your physical memory. Before I talk about the different ways that you can configure your swap, I first wanna talk about how you can actually check what your system is actually swapping on. So there's two different ways we can do this and we're gonna run the first one first, obviously because it's, it's the first one, I don't know what I'm saying there. So anyway, if we do swap on dash dash show, as you can see, it lists a partition. So slash dev slash NVMe 0N1P2. And as I said, it's a partition and the size I've given it is 48 gigabytes and none of it is currently being used. Now, if you know anything about swap space, you might be thinking, isn't 48 gigabytes way overkill for a swap space? And yes it is, but I'll talk about why my swap is so massive in just a bit. Now, the other way we can check it is by running free dash H. And as you can see, this has a bit more information with it as well. So this one actually shows how much is being used. On my system, I have 31 gigabytes of physical memory and 47 gigabytes of swap memory. Now you might be noticing that this number here and this number here are a little bit different. So the reason for that is because there's actually two ways to count gigabytes. You can either count them as a thousand megabytes or 1,024 megabytes. And as you can see, this one is presumably doing it by 1,000, and this one would be 1,024. So that's basically the reason why those two numbers are different. And on my system right now, I'm currently using 2.7 gigabytes of my physical memory, and I have 22 gigabytes free. And that's because some of my memory is allocated to some other things like shared memory and also as a buffer slash cache. So that's going to eat into some of my memory as well. And also you can see that none of my swap space is being used. So that leaves me with 47 gigabytes free. 
Now, there are currently two ways to configure your swap, and the Arch Linux wiki claims that there's no difference in performance between the two of them. On older versions of the Linux kernel, then there was actually some differences, but right now there's supposedly basically no difference. So you can either have a swap partition, this one tends to be far more popular, and a lot of distros will just do this by default, or you can have a swap file. Now, even though there's no performance difference between the two of them, there are some reasons why you may want to use one over the other. But before we get to that, let's talk about why you may want to actually have a swap. So the first obvious reason is that you need to extend your memory. So let's say that you're running a modern system that uses really expensive modern apps like web browsers, and you have maybe four to eight gigabytes of RAM. In a situation like that, you're probably going to frequently run out of memory, and Linux does actually have a way to recover from this by trying to kill processes that it doesn't need, but if it's not able to do that, basically your system is going to lock up. And you're probably going to want to avoid that. Now, even though swap is slow, as I said earlier, having some sort of memory is going to be better than no memory at all. So if you have maybe four to eight gigabytes of memory, I would consider having swap to be basically essential. Now, if you live in a TTY all the time, I guess you don't really need it. But I can't imagine that most people run their systems like that. So for most normal people who want to use a modern desktop, if you have a small amount of RAM like that, you probably want to have at least some sort of swap. I'll talk about how much you'd have in just a bit. So even though you could do it, don't give yourself, say, 100 gigabytes of swap space. Because on a system that has 4 to 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're probably going to have a really weak CPU. So even though everything is stored in memory, your CPU still isn't going to be able to handle it, so it's still going to slow down to a crawl. Now, you don't necessarily have to use swap space, especially if your drive space is very valuable. So if you're using, say, I don't know, an older ThinkPad and it's got the original drive in it, on a system like that, your drive space is going to be very, very expensive. Or if you're just using a laptop that had, say, a 128 gig hard drive or even a 256 gig hard drive, on a system like that, your drive space is pretty valuable, so you don't necessarily need the swap space if you desperately need that hard drive space. But if you have a large drive that has some spare space on it, I would really, really recommend using swap. But even if you're like me and you have a system that has 32 gigabytes of RAM or even more than that, there still might be a reason to actually have the swap space. And that's because you want to do system hibernation. So one of the steps of system hibernation is everything that's stored in your RAM has to be suspended to the disk. So that's suspended to your hard drive. Now, if you don't have swap space, this can't actually be done. Now, obviously, you never actually have to use system hibernation if you don't want to. But if it's something that you want to do, then you do need swap space regardless of how big your RAM is. Now, if you are going to do hibernation, I would recommend having your swap space be, at a minimum, the size of your RAM. Just so if you're using up all your RAM, it can still be suspended to the swap space. So, what about the two different types of swap? Why use one over the other? Well, when it comes to the swap partition, there's really two reasons to use it. If you're using an older version of the Linux kernel, so pre 5.0, BTRFS didn't actually support a swap file. So if you wanted to do swap, then you would have to actually do a swap partition. Now in newer versions of the Linux kernel, BTRFS actually does support a swap file, but it has limited support. So it is still recommended that you do use a swap partition if you're using this file system, but now you actually can use a swap file for it if you do want to. And the other reason why you want to use a swap partition is basically don't fix what isn't broken. There's no reason to not use a swap partition if you have the hard drive space for it. There's no performance benefit in using a swap file. Basically, just use the swap partition if you have the hard drive space to afford for it and you want to have the easier way to set it up. Now, as for the swap file, one of the benefits of using a swap file is that you can actually resize it on the fly. So if right now you need four gigabytes of swap and then later you need 16 gigabytes of swap, well, with a swap petition, you can technically do that. It's just a really bad idea to be messing with your partitions all of the time like that. But as for messing with a file like that, well, it's just a file. You're just making a file bigger and smaller. There's no reason whatsoever why that shouldn't be okay. So if you need to have your swap be resizable, then you basically have to use a swap file. Now, as I said as well, if your disk space is really, really expensive and you desperately need that disk space for other stuff, then a swap file is good because, as I said, you can resize it. So if you need that extra 8 gigabytes for files right now, 
then you can take that out of your swap file and just turn that back into regular hard drive space. But I don't really see this as being that much of a benefit. So how big should your swap space actually be then? Well, there's a couple of rules that exist and one of them is to double your RAM. So if you have eight gigabytes of RAM, that would be 16 gigabytes of swap. So that gives you plenty of room to hibernate your drive and then plenty of extra room as well. Now, because systems have way more RAM than they used to in the past, on my system, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. Double that would be 64 gigabytes. Now, on my system, I don't really care about that extra space. I could have assigned it to 64 and it wouldn't really matter. But a lot of people have started to reduce that rule. So there also exists a rule to do 1.5 times your RAM. So that would be 48 gigabytes. But you could probably even go less than that on a system like mine. You could go to say 1.1 times your RAM or 1.25 times your RAM. And that would still probably be plenty. So you could still hibernate your drive and you'd have a bit extra if you need that swap space for anything else. And the reason why I assigned 48 gigabytes on my system is actually two reasons. So the first one is that I just have a ton of extra drive space. So it's on the same drive as my root partition. The only other stuff on that drive is my FE partition and that takes up less than a gig. So I've got 400 and something gigabytes to my root partition and then 48 gigabytes to my swap. So I didn't actually care about that space. So for me, I just set it to a massive amount. Even if I never use it, it didn't really matter because I just had that much drive space on my system. I didn't really care about it. And obviously the reason why it's bigger than my RAM is just in case I ever want to do hibernation. Now right now I'm not actually using hibernation, but in the future I might do a video on it and I might like it and then just keep using it. So on a system that has a more reasonable amount of RAM, so let's say you have eight gigabytes. On a system like that, I would do at least 1.5 times your RAM. So that would be 12 gigabytes of swap. And on my old laptop, that's what I actually did. Now, if you have four gigabytes or less, I would do at least double. Now, you could get away with less if you don't need it, especially if you're never gonna do hibernation. If you just need an extra bit of swap space, and you don't want to do hibernation, I guess you could get away with maybe half your RAM. So on a system that has four gigabytes, you would do two gigabytes. But if you have that hard drive space free, I would say it's better to be safe than sorry. So the ultimate question then is, do you actually need swap space? Well, I would really recommend it, but the answer to this really depends. So do you do a lot of memory intensive work and you find yourself actually running out of memory fairly frequently. So you do things like, I don't know, run virtual machines, you do video rendering, you do other sorts of rendering, 3D modeling, things like this, things that use up a lot of memory. Or do you have low memory in general? Or maybe you just want your system to be able to hibernate. In those cases, I would say absolutely yes. But if you use a lot of terminal applications and you're always way under the amount of memory you wanna use and you never wanna hibernate your system, I guess you can get away with not having it. But as I've said multiple times throughout this video, if you have the hard drive space to spare, I would really, really recommend doing it just in case you run into a situation where you actually need that swap space. It's way better to actually have it there and your system to be really slow than for it to not be there and your system to lock up. But I'll leave the final decision up to you guys and what you want to do on your system. So for me though, I'm going to keep running swap just in case I ever want to do hibernation. I'm going to keep using probably 1.5 times or 1.25 times my memory just because one, it's going to be bigger than my actual RAM. So if I want to do hibernation, it'll work fine. And two, because I don't care about that hard drive space, as hard drives get even bigger, I'm going to care less and less about it. And I'm going to probably keep using a swap partition just because it's easy to set up. It's two commands and then one line in your FS tab file. And that's all you have to do. For a swap file, there's a little bit more work you have to do. Go check out the Arch Linux Wiki on how to actually set those up. And I don't really see any benefit in doing that for my system. So I'm just going to keep using what works on my system. And you guys can keep doing whatever you guys want to do. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montez, Peter, Leroy, Tony, Donald, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate link so we can buy the gear in this channel, or anything else you want, and on a small kickback for it. Also, go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel, available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute, 
And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and dingle the bell down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.